My son sacrificed his life to save me. Now, I kneel before no one. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Comic Con podcast. And if you're tuning in with us right now, you are on a bonus content. Congratulations. You just got some extra, extra content from the Dream Team, the Manimal, and Nemesis Prime. What's up, dude? Yeah, man, this bonus content. It's always fun. You know, we try to drop these every now and then. Of course, movie review, Black Adam. Yeah, first DC film in what? Quite a long time. Usually we're doing Marvel, but yeah. Real quick, since we're talking about bonus content, I want to tease you guys with something that we <laughs> we had a funny conversation about without revealing any information. Um, after we recorded our last episode, we had a conversation with a good friend of ours who kind of gave us some tea. And then we talked about how it would have been funny if we would have posted the, <laughs> the session, but like on the old school CDs. If you guys are like our age, you know that you could listen to the end of a CD and then the song would run like the last song would run for like five, 10 minutes. And then like a secret song would pop. Yeah, and we talked about it. <laughs> talked about doing that. I've been thinking about that since we had that conversation, how funny that would have been. Uh, everyone would have seen like runtime two hours and then they would have run to the end and heard a little secret conversation but. <laughs> yeah that would have been dope eh? <laughs> you know awesome. and it's funny like and remember like for some cds like if you had a player that didn't have like a fast forward button right you said like you it. had to like either sit through it and then you know hopefully you got it right there but yeah these are things kids will never know these oh, days. you younglings yeah so anyway so uh we're here bonus content we're going to do black adam review we know we're a little late and that's partly my fault um i didn't get to see it like when it came out and we took a little bit of a week for me to get able to see it but we are here to review dc eu we still got we still call it dc eu right yeah i'd still call yeah. it dc eu yeah black adam so um so we're gonna start off we'll kind of go over like the characters things we like things we didn't like easter eggs and just probably ramble on and on for a little while about the about the movie so Let's start, Justin, let's start with you, man. You're the bigger DC fan out of the two of us. And uh, I know you were pretty hyped about this movie. So what uh, What are your first initial thoughts, I guess? Let's we'll, let's start characters. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, so let's kind of get into the, the Justice yeah. Society of America. Yes. I mean, the fact that like, it's very interesting because of the fact that we, it wasn't like a built in, you know, like, all right, here's one movie for this character. Here's an introduction right. in this character's movie. It was just... Here you Boom. go. Here's yeah. Black Adam. Just Society is already formed. It's right. been around in a way like part of the DCEU, right? It just kind of maybe would operate outside of the Justice League or when yeah. Batman China was getting people. So, you know, you got uh, Adam Smasher, Dr. Fate, Cyclone, and Hawkman. I guess we can go from like, you know, like low tier to top tier characters, right? Yeah. We can do that. So, sure. Well, first, before we get in Justice Society as a whole, you know, one of the things I liked about that just as the whole was we didn't get background. They didn't like bog yep. us down with uh background on where they've been, what they do, what's their mission. It was just like, yo, Hey, we need help. Here's some heroes. Good to go. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's really good, man. Like origin stories are nice, but I feel like we might've moved past that in comic book movies for, to some extent, you know what I mean? True. So anyway, so yeah, let's get in with, um, let's start with Cyclone. She's probably the lowest tier character here, right? Uh, yeah, I would say probably the newest, the newest, right? maybe. Yeah, introduced in like the early 2000s from uh, Alex Ross. So you got Quintessa Swindell, Cyclone, dude, Smoke Show. Like, Man, she was awesome, bro. Like, um, I just uh, visually, visually, mm -hmm. she was amazing. Like the way her powers were and she was like floating. She was upside down. Mm -hmm, She's like, mm -hmm. I thought that shit was awesome. And then her costume, the colors and how it was like flowy. And it just really like um, made the visuals better with her yeah i thought that was awesome yeah definitely cool character like i was expecting something completely different um from the pre you know just from the previews you get to see a little bit but man like action wise fighting whether it's in the beginning whether it's fighting black adam whether it's fighting kind of towards the end and just in general like as a character like mm -hmm. i could see her having like a spin-off movie or you know her little interactions with uh adam smasher like you know have like a little partner movie right yeah you know, these are younger characters they are quote unquote part of the Justice Society. So why not like throw them into another movie with a, like a team movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I liked it. And we'll, we'll talk about this with Adam Smasher as well. I liked how with the JSA, it was Hawkman and he gets like, you know, Dr. Fate, who he's worked with before. And he's like, okay, we got some new blood. And they mm -hmm. just pick them up and it kind of goes back to what we're saying about origin stories. It was just like, 
screw it, grab them, let's go. You know, like they were just like, yeah, yeah actually it was kind of dangerous. They didn't even really hadn't been vetted as like, you know, heroes and teammates. Um, but we did get a little bit of her origin where she was kind of having the conversation with Adam Smasher and talking about how she was like, like kind of, you know, tested on and operated on by some scientists and they kind of hint at some of her background. So like you said, you know, the origins for them would be really good to see in like a, uh, HBO max show. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely like little, like even if they could do like one or two episode, you know, like even something like 45 minutes, like just right. give you, you know, like, I think that's like a werewolf by night type thing. Exactly. Like, yes. I think that's maybe what the DC should do with some of these right. other characters. Like one how shot. hard is it to just TV make yeah. one shots? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Like, and put it on HBO max or however they want to do it. And just, that's what they should do going forward with some of these characters, just so you get a little bit more of them. And right. then introduce them into another movie, you know, put them in just a justice society movie. So, right. It's also like low, like it doesn't cost much. And you can see if people start to like really kind of feel that character and you can then decide if you need to do more with it and make a little bit mm -hmm. more money off of it. So, yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. So let's move on to Adam Smasher. So what were your thoughts about him? Um, of course he's the comic relief, right? The kind of like the Spider-Man. Um, I, I think the actor is pretty cool. Uh, Noah, he's been in some stuff that my wife has watched, like on Netflix or something. I just, that's how I remember him. Okay. Uh, but yeah, cool character. You know, of course, out of the four justice society members, you have to kind of have like someone who's younger kind of has that comedic relief, like, like a Spider-Man mm -hmm. type character. And I'm fine with it. Like his, his kind of back and forth with uh, Hawkman was pretty good. So I enjoyed that. And uh, again, another character who's like old school, but also new school as far as DC right. characters, like because there's been multiple iterations of the uh, of Adam Smasher throughout the DC comics, you know, 75 plus years. So, yeah, thought he was cool uh, visually, visually as well. Like, I mean, I, you know, we all know Ant-Man like growing small, getting big, like, but he was like it was different, right? Like, cause like, yeah. even when that Ant-Man does it, even when he does it for the first time, it's very, um, you know, one dimensional. He's very slow. Right. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's, and even like in infinity war, I feel like he was slow, but like now the way that technology has improved, like he was definitely fast moving, you know, you could see other things going around him. So I, I thought he was cool. Same thing. I think they could do like a 45 minute show with him and kind of introduce a little bit more of his backstory or introduce other characters in the, uh, the DCEU. Did yeah. You? I thought he, I thought he was cool too. Um, and like you said, he's, he's been around for a while. It showed kind of like a generational type character. You know, they hinted at the previous Adam Smasher kind of getting like his, his uncle kind of giving him the mantle, so to speak, and like almost vouching for him. That was kind of how Hawkman found him in a way. Mm -hmm. um so i thought that was cool it speaks to a history it speaks to the past of jsa kind of like being around for a while which is always really cool um he's definitely probably in my opinion was the least interesting character because <clears throat> i don't mean this as like a disparaging because obviously both marvel and dc oftentimes mirror each other but he very much was an ant-man type character you know he's the second iteration he's not the first adam smasher he's kind of a scott lang adam smasher um mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I, I hear yeah. you. So it was cool, though. I really did like him. Um, and like you said, he, he provided the comic relief and a little bit of the muscle. Um, but all in all, not not a great arc for the character, but we could see more in the future. Yeah, definitely. So I'm, I'm sure we're going to agree on who the best JSA character is. So let's let's <laughs> save him for last and let's go with uh, Hawkman next. All right. So yeah, uh, Hawkman, cool character. I'm sure like, you know, for the most people who have seen Hawkman in multiple iterations, you know, he's been either on Legends of Tomorrow, Justice League Unlimited, um, you know, and even in some of the Justice League, like DC animated movies. So, you know, this was a different version of Hawkman, kind of the Hawk World version. So uh, thoroughly enjoyed him though. Like he was cool. Like he... He was like, screw this. Like, I'm standing toe to toe with Black Adam. Adam, oh, I don't yeah. even care, right? Like, powers are cool, looked cool. Um, you know, can't really say anything bad about him. Like, to be honest, like I didn't really I didn't have any complaints about the character at all. Yeah, you know, um, I've always been a massive Hawkman fan. And I don't I couldn't really tell you why. I just always thought he looked cool visually. I always really, really liked him. Um I was honest. I'm really excited to see him in the movie or that he was like when it was solicited for the movie. But, um, 
You know, I, I know it's funny. My wife watched a Justice League cartoon, and obviously, more it seems like people are more familiar with Hawk Girl than they are with Hawk Man. So, mm-hmm. I liked it. I thought he was great. I thought it was really cool as him as the leader of the team as well, which typically we don't ever see. Hawkman's not really a leadership role. Typically. Oh, no, not at all. Um, so, I thought that was cool. Um, same thing. They didn't bog down with like his history. You know, this dude's got wings. He's got, they mentioned Inth Metal. He almost was more of like, um, he was kind of like the Bruce Wayne, really. And that's actually something funny that my wife, my wife mentioned when we were watching the movie. She's like, what's he supposed to be? Like the Bruce Wayne of the JSA? Like, cause he's got this mansion, he's got this jet, <laughs> it opens up on like a secret, you know, pale yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> well, we saw that we said that in like the trailer. We were like, yo, this is the X Mansion. <laughs> right, right, right. So it was, it was a little different, but it was cool. Um, and like you said, toe to toe, he was a badass. He wasn't going to back down, even though he was massively outmatched uh, against Black Adam. But um, I liked it. Want to also talk about you had the mace, and then I loved later when you got to see the battle axe. I thought that shit was cool, man. I, I smiled when the battle axe came out. Yeah, I was. I I totally forgot that he had that. Like yeah. I was so used to seeing him with the mace, mm-hmm. and then yeah, and then when it like he switches it and just like uh, fights, it's it's pretty badass. So yeah. So then the last member of the JSA we'll talk about, obviously, is Dr. Fate, which, in my opinion, stole the fucking show. Um, Dr. Fate was amazing visually, character, everything about him. Kent Nelson was so awesome. And Pierce mm-hmm. Brosnan, as the character, just lent, 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 sorry, lent so much like gravitas to the character. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved every scene with him. It was so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pierce Brosnan, great actor, obviously been in so much, you know, obviously known for a lot of drama. Obviously, biggest thing I would say is Goldeneye, you know, 00, being gold, uh, 007 for quite a long time. But uh, yeah, man, it was so great to see finally like the magic users mm-hmm. in in the DC, you know, EU. Um, just wild stuff like right. and and I feel like, yeah, people are like, well, we've already seen the same type of stuff like in Doctor Strange, but I feel like this went all a lot farther. You know, obviously the part where he kind of like makes multiple copies of himself. Right. Yeah, we've that seen cool. that when he fight he fought Thanos, but I feel like visually it was a lot more. Like yeah. when Doctor Strange did that, he kind of like was it, it was like far back, right? But when in this, when you saw it done, they were he was action. up close. Yeah, they were they all were they were all yeah. fighting, like there yeah. was it was up close action. So like I feel like it was done a lot better. And a, and a thing that I actually just read last week was that there was a deleted scene that was supposed to be like a mid credit scene with the helmet and somebody was actually picking up the helmet. Mm. So whether that's like Kareem or what's his name? Yeah. Kala, I think it's a uh, Khalid. Khalid. There's like, yeah, Khalid, yeah, there's yeah. Khalid and then uh, there's a couple other characters who possibly could be it, but yeah, kind of, you know, maybe that'll get into the DVD Blu-ray version, right? You know, they'll, mm-hmm. maybe they'll add it in there, but or, you know, because I mean, Dr. Fate is, is, is it's the helmet, right? It, it's right. never been, it's, they've had multiple versions of it, or it could be a female. It doesn't have to be, um, the one, the newer version of, uh, Dr. Fate. So you never know, man, we could see Dr. Fate again. Yeah. And even still, you could, you could even, even see Pierce Brosnan. Cause in some of the more recent storylines with Khalid as, uh, the new Dr. Fate, he does have Kent inside the helmet, kind of like yes. speaking to him and training him as well. So you can, you, there's a chance we could still get some Pierce Brosnan as well. And you never know in comics, always the return of Kent Nelson is possible. So, um, so cool. You know, one of the the things I loved, like the the clone thing that he did, was awesome. But it's just it's so awesome to see, like straight out of the comics, like when he would drop the, like the onk, like the cross on yep. him. Like, mm-hmm. Did that like multiple times, and that shit was so cool. Um, yeah i really really loved i thought i thought honestly if i were to choose like what was the the best part about the movie it was dr fate for me oh yeah i i agree with that you know a lot of people had some there's some people that complained about like that you didn't see his eyes because that's you know that's kind of like the version you know his helmet is you actually see his eyes um but you know i think for the most part i thought the helmet was pretty badass like I, i had no complaints about how it looked visually like he looked great um, you know, you have a lot of characters who fly in this, right? So mm-hmm. like you need them to look badass, like in, in midair. And I feel like visually sure, it was that. done well. Only Adam Smasher, right? Like the only one who did the fly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, um, I guess, yeah. And then of course the, the main attraction, Dwayne Johnson, black Adam, uh, visually 
I mean, he, he is the part, right? right you know, he's right. been talking about this for years. He wanted he wanted to do this as soon as he was cast, and it's just been like a long process to finally get him out. And shit, I mean, he had no problems doing the role, right? Right, right. Yeah, um, I'm I'm with you, but like, am I blown away by it? No, I mean, let's mm-hmm. be honest. You know, The Rock isn't the greatest actor, and I'm I'm a little worried about future iterations of Black Adam because. Look, let's say let's say you did this movie <clears throat> and you took away JSA. Yeah. I don't think this would be a good movie. So I don't know how he I don't know if there was enough character development for Black Adam. I don't really know where you go next with Black Adam. Um mm-hmm. obviously his interaction with like the people of Kondok and like maybe trying to change his ways, but he was kind of very much monotone and like he was just one character the whole time. Um there wasn't a lot of depth. So, Mm -hmm. but I think it's also like that it's from like, you got to realize like he's from like, like almost that BC era. Right. Right, So like him, he's still like learning everything. And I feel like that's the same thing that, you know, people complain about with like Captain Marvel on the, you know, Brie Larson, like she was a human, but like she forgot all that. And then she's brought up through with the Kree. And I feel like it's the same thing with like black Adam. Like he's from a time where, the language and like he's learning everything you know like with the tv and you yeah, know like yeah. everything it's completely different so yeah i get what you're saying he's not like there's t- some movies for Dwayne that are like perfect but i feel like this he kind of was he had to be very stern very uh you know, right not not so much charismatic I get you. but he can be i think yeah i think so too i mean shit dude like jumanji awesome like mm-hmm. him and jumanji i think he's is so great i just yeah i'm I'm concerned. Um, I, I'm, I'm concerned on like where it's going to go from here with like future movies. But yeah, I, if he I, could I, be like the, if he could be like, uh, have you ever seen Hobbs and Shaw? It's horrible. Oh, but like the back and forth interaction is, is still funny as hell. Like, and that's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, bad, yeah. if he could be like that version in a way without like comedy, it, it's, it'd be great. I, I think it'd, it'd be done very well. So. Yeah. Um, but let's move out of the characters. You know, uh, I guess, you know, what did you think about the movie itself? <clears throat> I thought it was good. I thought, I mean, it, it was long though, wasn't it? Like, honestly, after I was kind of surprised by, um, so spoiler alerts, obviously we're going to be doing some spoilers. Oh, yeah. If you're listening um, to this people, you know, it's all spoilers right. by now. <laughs> when they took him to, um, to like the black site for yeah. Task Force X or whatever, I kind of was like, damn, this is the end of the movie. Like, mm-hmm. and, and then it kept going and I was like, holy shit, this movie's long as hell, dude. Like, but, um, I liked it in general. I thought it was good. I liked the, um, the little switcheroo with his character, you know, like where mm-hmm. you thought it was the son and it ends up being the dad. I thought that was an interesting take and like a different take on black Adam and kind of lent a little bit more where it made sense. Cause like initially with the kid, he's so like, oh, freedom, freedom. And he's like, look, he's like looking out for people. Right. And then it didn't mesh with black Adam's character where he's like, yo, I don't give a shit anymore. You know what I mean? It just, those two vibes didn't mesh. And so when you find out it's like the dad and he's a little bit more jaded, um, mm-hmm. it definitely made more sense. And so I liked that. Yeah. And isn't it in like, I feel like I've seen this, but isn't, isn't like black Adam. And I don't, I don't know how much you know of, but isn't like black Adam when he's not black Adam, isn't he like old man? I thought, I feel like, yeah, he's, they don't, he doesn't really switch back and forth that often, but I, I think you're like right. I, I think like I remember when uh, they did that Superman Shazam animated. Uh, you when you there's like once or twice power or something. Yeah, yeah, you see him. Obviously, there's. It's funny, like Black Adam, you never see him change from. You know, he never says Shazam and he goes back and forth. But obviously, with Captain Marvel Shazam, you always see him as you know young Billy, and then he changes to you know the older version. So it's interesting, but. Yeah, I feel I think he's like an old man and that's what I remember. But if they've retconned him many times, so they had they could have changed it. I also really liked how they 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 didn't leave out the stuff with like the wizard and everything that ties in with like. Shazam. Yes. I thought that was really cool, but they didn't also what was once again, like I said, like kind of the same theme of them not bogging down with like um with like origin stories is they didn't bog that down. It was just mm-hmm. like, bro, you should understand this. We don't need to explain it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Here's the same guy, here's Dejaiman Hansu as the wizard, and you should know where he's at. You should know what they're talking about based on Shazam. And I thought that was great. It was done really well. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, what are you kind of what are your favorite parts? And then I'll kind of go and uh, 
favorite parts, favorite parts. Um, I, I, I genuinely liked the, the flashback stuff was all I thought was really cool. Um, obviously all the JSA stuff. Um, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was a good movie. I wouldn't say it was like, I don't want to say it's not great. It was mm-hmm. good. It wasn't, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot writing on this movie because it's kind of supposed to kickstart the new DCEU, revitalize it and whatnot. And obviously the end credit scene as well. I don't think it quite lived up to the hype that they wanted, um, mm-hmm. but I thought it was very enjoyable. So I don't know. I don't really have, like, to be honest, like any favorites. What about, what about you? Uh, I mean, any of the fighting scenes were great, right? Those I, great. I think that's like my, the favorite part for me and, and just the history of everything. Like you said, yeah, like the quick origin is always the perfect way to go. Um, you know, a lot of times it feels like, you know, even with the characters, like we, you know, obviously we talked about all the characters, but the fact that like, you know, Marvel did that with like a lot of characters, like with Black Widow and Hawkeye and even like Black mm-hmm. Panther and Spider-Man to an extent, like they all kind of were just introduced and you were fine with it. Like you didn't have any problems. Like if you didn't know too bad like you know right, right. catch up basically and read some books exactly like yeah. it's really it's made for you know that's what it's for obviously you know i think some some down parts i, I guess you know like you said like when he gets put to the black side of um yeah uh, you know what is it uh, task force x. yeah task force yeah. x like it's great to see amanda waller show up again uh, oh the and actress. the chick and the chick from um Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah Jennifer cool Holland, I think her name is. I was yeah. really excited about that. I even said that to my brother. I was like, oh, that's so cool. And he's like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, that's a girl from Suicide Squad. And then also right. from, from uh, Peacemaker. So I thought that was awesome. Um, you know, I guess, you know, for me, like something I really didn't like, <laughs> and it's stupid, but like when like he first fights, right? Like when he first gets summoned and then he's outside the mountain and then they mm-hmm. play freaking paint it black. Yeah. Like, I remember you telling so me when you started that bugged you. And I was trying to remember the part because I was like, oh, damn, Justin told me he hated it when they played some song. And I was trying to remember what part it was. So that, that was it. That was the one, huh? Okay. Like they could have had such an epic, you know, because like you watch Wonder Woman, right? And you know that battles, that battle cry for like her, you know, you right. watch Batman versus Superman, um, Man of Steel, any of those. And it's like they're great, uh, he- you know, heavy metal, hard rock, like orchestrate, but like really like. <laughs> I can paint it black. Like how cliche do you have to go? <laughs> yeah. I did to me, I didn't really even clock it. I just I didn't really care. Um, but I get you. I'm it just took you. you out of that moment because it's like it's so epic that like, you know, even it because he's similar to like how um Superman is. Like he's he's fast, he's strong. So like even when Superman is fighting and he slows down, he's you know, he sees everything a lot slower, it's still like such a different feeling. But then, it'll, you know, you're like watching and you're like, oh, this is so cool. But in, in, there's like one part of you that's like that. And then there's the other part of it's like, I'm rocking out listening to Paint It Black in the movie theater right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's definitely, um, I think I, in those situations with the movies, I prefer more of like a, like, I don't even know what you call it, like the orchestra, or like just no music, yeah. no, no song. But it's definitely them trying to take a page, in my opinion, also of like Marvel. You know, like Marvel does that. They've done that with thor guardians and it seems to be like almost every marvel movie now does something like that yeah so um yeah it was fine for suicide squad like that's you know that's the way james gunn did the second one and even in the first one too with like david ayers like i get it they're like that's the type of characters that i could see them like listening to like these types you know this type of music while they're like killing people or whatever but like i just feel like it's said it's it should have been such a cinematic you know, score. Gotcha. Yeah. But, um, so, oh, wait, okay. So then it, that's it. Or just yeah, the fight that's scenes kind, is kind of your favorite Yeah. I mean, part? that's kind of, you know, the fight scenes were great. I, I you know, I, I think the movie itself was just been, has been amazing, you know, right. and whether it's, you know, obviously it's not going to win any awards. I think it definitely put DC in a better spot. Um, and again, it doesn't really set up anything. Well, I guess it really does. And, and you know, we'll get to that. But like, mm-hmm. you know, nothing about nothing about Aquaman, nothing about Flash, you know, oh, so not even tease. A little. I mean, I guess a little bit. Like it was cool when you saw the kids' bedroom and he had uh, oh, he talked course, about yeah. all of them. You saw Batman, you saw Aquaman, and there was a lot of like quippy comments about Flash and, and stuff like that and all the all the the main heroes. So mm-hmm. it, I, I liked that it's also like, look, here's the universe, you know. Um I can't remember though. Was it a picture of Batman, like Affleck's Batman, or was it just the generic bat symbol? I think it was. 
I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, I think you saw Superman. You saw Superman. You saw, like Superman. I, yeah. you saw Wonder Woman. And then there's a comics as well. Yeah, there's um, the, the new 52 comics he drops and stuff like that. Or Rebirth, yeah. I think it was. But um, yeah, I don't think Batman, I feel like Batman would have just been action figures and stuff. I don't think there was Affleck's Batman. I feel like they're being like, and that's across the board, they're really careful. Like, it's still not sure if it's going to be Affleck yet or not, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I thought it was cool, man. It, all in all, the movie was was good. It was enjoyable. I thought, you know, with a character like Black Adam, who to maybe not people like us isn't considered a top tier, well-known character. And mm-hmm. I thought they did a really good job with it. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, I loved how they brought in the JSA. Like that was like, I feel like just opens so many possibilities now mm-hmm. with the JSA. There's so many characters you can get to with that. Yeah, so. it was the first, it was, you know, DC's first true introduction to like, you know, the mystical side, you know, because I, I guess you could kind of look back and look at Suicide Squad and look at Enchantress like, yes, that's that did start realistically like the villain side of, you know, magic users. But, you know, there's so many great characters on on the hero side that you're like, well, do you start with like Constantine because he's huge? You know, do you do Zatanna, Zatanna yeah. Dr. Fate, you know, and they they did it right. You know, I, I think right. Dr. Fate was perfect for it. And yeah. like you said, there's there's other characters that are part of the Justice Society that they could obviously throw into another movie. You know, let's mm-hmm. say Dr. Fate doesn't continue or Adam Smash doesn't continue. Yeah, oh, that's man, always a I rotating mean, cast. Right. Yeah, just, just what I was going to say. It's a revolving door of who you throw in, right? So you could bring like and, – and, and the thing about the JSA is there's so many like iterations of the team as well. So it's like um, like different terms of like – there's been like the female wildcat. I'm just thinking wildcat in general. And then like the male wildcat, you know, there's just so many that they Mm -hmm. can bring in. Um, I, I think it's a great idea. Obviously, you know, star girl as well has a lot of popularity with the show, but, um, which actually just got announced that this is the last season. Yeah. All those dude, they're putting the CW is putting like kibosh (sighs) and all that shit, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's so basically this is going to end. So like star girl is going to end. Flash, this is the final season, and mm-hmm. we have nothing. Like they've not announced. Lois and Clark, like, no I show. heard, was going to cancel as well. Oh Looks wow! Like the I, I, <sighs> I don't know if it's rumored or what, but that they think that because you know it's all everything else is. Yeah, I think they're moving away from the CW man, and they want to free up these properties for HBO Max if they want to do more with it. You know, yeah, so I guess you're right. It's probably the best best way to go because we're totally going off topic here. But since we're talking DC, which we ran, we rarely do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's like the CW for so long with the Arrowverse did such great representations of all these characters. Half of them you already just named, right? And then mm-hmm. like it's tough to go like the Flash was tough because uh, Grant Gustin's Flash was so awesome and so perfect. And then you get Ezra Miller's and it was just like, yeah, eh, okay. Like it's obviously the big screen, but it's not as good. Yeah. And so it, it put them in a very tricky position. Yeah. That their small screen outdoes their big screen, and I and I, I see that that that's an issue. So, yeah, I would love to go back and like watch Arrow again, and like really sit down it. and kind of enjoy it. Yeah, and that's the one thing. Like people always complain, well, DC movies aren't as good as like the Marvel movies, but you have to realize like DC still does the TV shows, and you get a lot more in right. a season of whether it's Arrow or Flash or Supergirl than you get in a movie of True. you know the characters. So like. Yeah, it's drawn out. You still see some villains. You still see more character development, but it's still, you know, for the most part, it's always better. You know, tw- they they were doing twenty to twenty four episodes like a mm-hmm. season. Like it's wild. Think that. I mean, you, you only see, get an hour and a half, two hour movie. You see every single member of the Justice Society in the Arrowverse. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. So, like, what? Like, obviously, there was a Doctor Fate in. Um, oh, you know what? Doctor Fate showed up in Smallville. I'm not sure he showed up at all in uh, the Arrowverse. He might be the only one. Yeah, I can't think. Because Our Man was in uh, Star Girl, right? Yeah, Hawkman and Hawkgirl were in um, yeah. Legends as well. No as... Green Lanterns, though. Yeah, they never want to touch that. Yeah, they, they never want to touch like the big or Superman six or, or Batman. Yeah. yeah, like they name drop them, but they right. never kind of. You know. Yeah. So anyway, um, let's talk in credit scene. So. Obviously, it was no real surprise, right? Like a lot, oh, yeah, of it, it got leaked quite quite a bit, and it was pretty, pretty like announced that this was what The Rock wanted. This is yeah. what The Rock was cooking. If you mm-hmm. know what I mean, right? <laughs> so, obviously, we see the return of Henry Cavill as Superman, which 
I couldn't be happier, honestly. There's no, in my opinion, it was always, there's no future that DCEU will never continue or do well if you don't bring back Superman mm -hmm. and Henry Cavill Superman. That was always my thought. So I'm, I'm glad they finally realized that as well. Um, Definitely. Yeah, and did you watch his, like, like um, Cavill after the weekend? I think it dropped. He, he released, like, a social media post. I, I don't know. I think I saw it on Instagram, but where he's like, hey, you know, enough times passed like of course i'm I'm back I'm returning and and i liked how he talked about how you're going to see a more joyful superman like a more hopeful mm -hmm. and joyful and fun which is which is tip honestly that that is don't get me wrong I, i've always said dc should lean heavier into the darkness of their universe but i don't necessarily feel like that is superman though it's almost everyone else and then superman's mm -hmm. the light and all of his movies were were pretty dark true um, yeah yeah so I think I think it's good if they go a little bit more joyful with him. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Uh, definitely gonna have to change up the Boy Scout. Uh, you know, we when I had, uh, of course, Ken on here a few weeks ago, and we were talking about you know he, how his for his love for Superman, and uh, you know it's different. It's tough to find like a Superman fan, right? Right. Um, you know, from from my friends who are. I've, I've known for many, many years, you know, there's only like one or two guys who kind of like watch comics and stuff like that. And one of them is a huge Superman fan. And it's always tough to find like that person who has the love for Superman, like, you know, someone does. And when you do find that, it's like completely different because most people, of course, are are used to the, you know, Batman and like the Joker and Harley. And, you know, right. there's different characters like there's never been like someone who's like, I love Superman and I think he's great and I've seen all the movies, you know, the Brendan Roth and, and you know, uh, Christopher Lee or um, what's his name? Not Christopher Lee. <laughs> Christopher <laughs> Reeves. Christopher Reeves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and then everything like keeping up with Smallville. Like I, I love Smallville. Oh, yeah. And I love the Man of Steel. Like, oh, yeah. It, yeah, I think uh, Cavill is he just and he looks the part. He, he just oh, completely yeah. looks the part. God, and you want more to see what's going to happen with him. Yeah. You know, um I will say this though, like obviously they're they're going towards uh, Black Adam versus Superman type movie, which is interesting because obviously their strengths and uh, Superman's weakness to magic. But you know, man, it's like the same shit. You know, I, honestly, when we were leaving the movie, I was telling my wife this: "Is like, oh, it's cool, and this is where they're probably going to go with it." Obviously, this is what they talked about, and I, and I go, you know what it's going to be like though? I can basically tell you the movie is going to be like Godzilla versus Kong. Same thing where they fight for the beginning, then they team up and they mm -hmm. go against someone else. You know what I mean? And like, it's like, come on, man. Like, it's just, it's the same shit like Freddy versus Jason. You know, <laughs> you, you know it's the same. Like, we know yeah. how it's going to end. Um, yeah, we didn't really even talk about the villain, right? We didn't even talk about Sabak. So, yeah, like, Sabak. Like, it's on. like, eh, whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, he was just there for someone to punch for them yeah. to, you know, join up again. And I mean, dude, honestly, what I'm saying is exactly what happened in Black Adam, right? So you have JSA, they fight Black Adam and they team up, you know. But they were pretty good too performer. about that, like keeping it, it wasn't bad. Yeah. They were, they were really good about like keeping TV spots and trailers like away from like who he was going to, you know, who he's going to fight. Which is good, right. right? Like, you don't want to give everything away, which I feel like, you know, obviously we're talking about, we're going to talk about this, you know, in the next, in the coming weeks, but Black Panther, like, they've just showed way too much of the movie. I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel like they kind of had to, though. They're in a weird I, situation. Yeah, they you know what I mean? Yeah, but they could have kept, like, the Shuri as Black Panther. I back. think they should have kept that under wraps. Um, yeah. A little bit that's, longer. That's tough, though. I mean, that's tough with, like, your main Black Panther actor <laughs> dying. And it's like, hey, we want you to be excited about this movie that's missing the Black Panther. We got to show stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's way too much, you know. It's. I agree. I've been. I haven't been watching. I don't think I watched any more of the trailers since, like, the yeah. the first reveal of Shuri. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's our it. black Adam review. So the other thing I really want to get with black Adam, and I wonder if we ever will. Um, I mean, come on, man. When's black Adam? Honestly, I don't give a shit about black Adam and Superman. I want black Adam and Shazam, you know, yeah. like that's, that's gotta happen. Right. Like that's, I, I guess that'll be Shazam three. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe I would love to see him at like a end credits in Shazam two, right, or something. Yeah, it could still happen. Obviously, they they could still do that. Um, or you know, like they like I said earlier, they did that Superman, that Superman Shazam animated movie that also involved uh, Black Adam. Like all three of them were in that movie. Yeah. So you know, there's a possibility of doing it that way, or say screwing it and then just uh, 
mm-hmm. you know, just go in. The, that's the route you want. Like you really wanted Shazam and Black Adam. Obviously, they tease that even in the first one because at the end, like right. there's that one altar chair that's all messed up, which you know they didn't really touch on too much. But well, and I also thought you know now thinking about it, what's really interesting is Shazam number one. You get the you know. Superman shows up at the lunchroom. Obviously, you don't see Captain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then in Black Adam, you see Superman. So, I mean, I imagine they've got something something in plan. I just really, obviously, it's going to be really weird if we never see Shazam and Black Adam go up against each other. Yeah. But it's also really weird to see The Rock punch a child in the face. You know, just, I don't know how that's going to go. <laughs> oh my even god! Though, even though Billy Batson's, you know, obviously grown up as Shazam, but still, you know, it's yeah. a child in there. But, well. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, overall, I, I'd probably give it like an eight out of ten. Um, yeah. You know, some some little things in there, but you know, I, I cannot wait to watch it again at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, without all of like the hype and stuff around it, I can really sit back and enjoy it. Yeah. What about you? Same. I'm with you on the eight, eight out of ten. I think is a good good score for it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know why it got so review bombed before, but don't get me wrong, it wasn't great. And honestly, maybe it's a little lower. It could be a little lower, but I love the fact that it was new characters. There mm-hmm. really wasn't any main s- mainstream character in that movie. And so I bumped it up a little bit for me. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome, well, that's guys. That's it, well, everybody. That's our bonus content late, but still great. The Black Adam review from the Comic-Con podcast. Drop us your thoughts. You know, hit up our, um, I'm sure you'll see a post on the Instagram, the Comic-Con podcast. Drop it in the comments section your your thoughts on the movie. We'd love to hear that. You know, we don't get to interact as much with you guys. So it'd be great to hear you, what you guys think about the movie as well. So definitely. But appreciate it, everybody. Yeah. If you're listening to this, keep um waiting on Friday. We'll probably drop this one on Monday. You'll be mm-hmm. listening to this Monday, on Monday, Tuesday, whatever, sometime yeah. during the week if you're listening. But we, we appreciate if you've uh, listened to this so long. And then uh, check our normal shows, of course, Fridays. Yep. That's it, everybody. Thanks a lot. We'll catch you later. Peace.